it's that it was like a scenario that you three driving and that you feeling all that guilt and all the different scenarios and everything. It's you get layers and layers and layers and the levels and the intricacies and complexity that are involved with the dreams, and you know they're they're designed to be complex, so that there'll be this like pervasive, all pervasive and suffocating feeling of of being trapped in a very crazy place. Uh, Jesus says that that. You know, you're not really so much afraid that it's a, it's a bad world or a hostile world and everything. The thing that scares you the most is meaninglessness. You know, you'll, you'll even make up bad, good and bad, to avoid meaninglessness. So, when you start to go down deeper and deeper, and you start to get underneath the layers and layers, it just gets, it gets more and more meaningless. And to the ego, that's, it's more, the ego interprets that as more hopeless. He said, you're really, really terrified of a meaningless world. And basically, when you go down and down deeper, that's the point where, you know, it's like a, a release point or a surrender of trying to read meaning into something that needs to be just handed over to the Holy Spirit, ultimately. That's the only escape from it. So, you know, the guilt, maybe you're feeling, you think, I, I killed a bird, I was the driver, I, I ran over a bird, you know, I took a bird's life. But remember, nothing happens by accident, even in the dream world. It's all, it's all part of a plan, you know, it's like, everything that even seems to die in this world, you know, Jesus is saying, will live again in you, when you recognize who you are. It's like, it's, that's where the life is. The life isn't in the bodies. The life can't be snuffed out so easily like that. It's the ego made up the world of so-called organic and living things, where there seems to be birth and death and cycles and all these different things. It's all part of the fabric of the same, same dream. And when you go through a day where you feel that heavy guilt, it's like, it's just like a weight a noose around your neck, when it just feels like you can't get out of the noose, that's just an opportunity to drop down even deeper into, in and through that sense of meaninglessness. Because that's where all this takes you. I mean, I, I know in my life, I kept following, following, following the guidance, following my prompts, and it's almost like I had to go through rings of what seemed to be deeper and deeper meaninglessness. You know, what's the point? What's the point of all this? Where is this heading? I can't make any sense of it. And then I can't make any sense of this deeper and deeper and deeper into a surrender of, of meaning, a surrender of trying to figure it out. I mean, I was just talking to Lisa tonight and she said there's a, there's a man who's volunteering at the monastery who's a millionaire and he's there working the course lessons every day and she said, he is so adorable because he thinks he knows something and he's aware that that's his problem. So he'll start yammering on about something and Lisa will just stare into his eyes and he'll go, he'll stop his yammering and he'll go, oh yeah, I still think I know something. And then he'll start yammering on about something else and Lisa will turn to him and just look at him, looks at him and he goes, okay, yeah. I remember, still think I know something, and then he's doing something, and this guy is a millionaire, and he's down there volunteering at the, the monastery, working with his course lessons and collaborating with her, and then he's going yammering on something, and he goes, oh yeah, I really have a bad case of the I know mind, he's the millionaire, says, I think I really know something, and she's just like, she's saying to me on Skype, adorable. Adorable. Like the Holy Spirit has sent me a millionaire who's onto it, and his only problem, his only problem, is he thinks he knows something. And they work on this every day. He will get off yammering on something, after they're collaborating, he'll start going talking about something. She says, like he'll try to tell a joke, and he'll tell the joke, and she'll just look at him and stare in his eyes. He says, that's right, that's not even funny. I still think I know something. It's just this gaze of 
that's not why you're here. You're here for a much deeper purpose. And then, finally, she speaks after she's looked at him, looked at him, looked at him. He ambers on and she just looks and he says, okay, I think I know something. And he sa she says, you know, the stuff that you're talking about doesn't really mean anything at all. And what you're really wanting to say to me is, I love you, Lisa. <laughs> and he went, you're right. That's what I'm too terrified to say. That's what I've been avoiding. That's what I'm scared about. That's why I'm feeling in having all this mind chatter about nothingness. It's because I'm afraid of the love. I'm afraid of expressing the love. I'm afraid of, let's go home together. I'm afraid of, we are the same one. I'm afraid of, everything that I've ever taught myself and learned in this entire cosmos is a lie. Everything, without exception. And that I love you is true. And what would it cost me, you know, if I really just let go into that love? Jesus says, you would lose the whole world that you see, if you, if you open to that love. You would be engulfed. You would first weep tears, like weep like you've never wept before because of the love is so intense. If you dropped it, if you dropped the belief that you know anything about anything. I mean, really, this is not a difficult course at all. Let's be honest. Really. Let's quit playing the, the game that this is difficult. Look at the lessons. Nothing I see means anything. I have given everything I see all the meaning it has for me. I do not know what anything is for. These thoughts do not mean anything. I'm never upset for the reason I think. I'm upset because I see something that's not even there. I see only the past. My mind is preoccupied with past thoughts. Those are the first eight lessons in the workbook. Jesus isn't holding back. He's saying, you can learn this course because it's the most natural thing ever. It's been very unnatural to learn all of this much ado about nothing. When we were in school, I mean, some of us may have had better experiences and worse experiences, but I don't know about you, but did anybody here really enjoy school? No. I didn't. I won't lie. I remember in grade school, it was I was playing all summer, just playing in the creek with the the frogs and the the crawdads and making little things with clay. And I would play, play, play. I would I would play really long, and I'd get good and hot and sweaty and tired because I'd play. Hard, I, you know, I'd play my heart out every day, and then I'd get home, I'd get cleaned up, I'd take a shower, I'd get to sleep, and I'd wake up to play again. What do you do in summer when you're a kid? I played. And then when it came to be fall, when I had to go and learn things in school, I did not like it. I felt like I was going to a prison camp. I was always nervous and anxious about the first day of school. I said, what am I doing here? I don't even belong here. This is not play. This is not fun. And, you know, and really, recess was the best time in school for me. And, or field trips. That's all I look forward to. Math? No. Reading? No. Any kind of... I was just not thrilled with it. And now we have a context for it. We, we start to realize that we've we, we bought the bait. We went for it. We thought we could learn our way out of it. And the ego was laughing at us the whole time. The more intricate our learnings became, the more confused we were. The more lost. The more complicated things became. It's more complicated to be an adult than it is to be a baby. We've gone in the wrong direction. We started out kind of complicated, and we've gotten really complicated. And in the end, yeah, it's about, it's just about experiencing our innocence. That's, that's all it's about, really. 
anybody tries to tell you anything else, it's just, it's just a, a load of BS. I mean, in the end, you have to give up your religion, and you have to give up spirituality too. Everyone's like going around, the, the big difference between religion and spirituality. Ah, that's not true either. It's, it's all much ado about nothing. You have to, you have to, in the end, you have to see that, that your spiritual path that you clung to, and all the techniques you use, and all the things, it was all about the innocence, it was all about the love. It was all about acceptance. It was all about recognition. It was never about the process. You know, as much as sometimes we try to convince ourselves, I'm waking up. Damn proud of it. Yeah, who is the one that's so proud of the process of waking up? It's time. In the end, even that, you know, you, you have to let go of it all. Of course, you have to let go of the journey. In the end, to arrive at the state of mind, which was a journey without distance to a goal that never changed. That changed. The, the goal itself, the movement of time, the process itself, has got to cave in on itself, eventually. Like a, like a stack of cards, you know, it's just gonna, it's like if you're building a house of cards, it's all gonna get, it's all gonna implode on itself. And be happy for the imploding. Remember the, the Grace Slick song? Let the world around us just fall apart. Baby, we can make it if we're heart to heart. That's the Holy Spirit. Hmm. We can find it in our hearts, we can find the innocence there, even when things seem to collapse, even when things seem to implode. Don't try to hold it together. We're going home. We're we're waking up, and there's there's not a need to make it any more complicated than that. So in the end, that's why we're here to expose the ego, let it arise and release it, because it's a death wish, it is the guilt that Malfrey, you were talking about. It's this pervasive sense of guilt. It's the only game the ego knows. It does everything, every scheme it has, every defense, Every trick in the book is all aimed at perpetuating guilt. And I think for those of you that have come here, you, you have had glimmers, some glimmers of this innocence. That you're just perfect as you are. You don't need to change, you don't need to become better at something. You don't need to fix something, you know. Just glimmers of that. <laughs>